we're now going to see how to find the tangent plane to a parameterized surface at a given point on the surface. So let's consider a general parameterized surface. So the equation has the form r of uv equals x of uv comma y of uv comma z of uv. And let's fix u and v. Okay, so these are going to correspond to the point on the surface where we want to find the tangent plane. So we're going to find the tangent plane at the point r of uv. All right. So we notice that there are two tangent vectors. Well, actually, there are lots of tangent vectors, but there are two of them which we can easily write down. And these are ru equals dx du comma dy du comma dz du. And this is all to be evaluated at our fixed values of u and v. And also rv equals dx dv comma dy dv comma dz dv. Okay, so why are these tangent vectors to the surface? Well, let's think about the picture. So here's, here's our surface in three-dimensional space. Um, now we could look at a curve where um, v is constant and u is varying. So here's a curve where v is equal to const a constant. Now let's say v is constant and equal to our given value of v. We could also so our point uv is, is on here somewhere. So here's our point uv. And also through this point, there's a curve on the surface where u is constant. So maybe that looks like this. Now if we look at this um, vector ru, then what we're doing here is we are varying u and holding v fixed. So what this vector actually is, is it's a tangent vector to the curve where v equals constant. Okay, so this is the vector ru. This is going to be tangent to this blue curve. And the tangent vector to the red curve is going to be rv. So rv is we're fixing u and varying v, and we get a tangent vector to the curve where u is equal to constant. So those are two vectors in the tangent plane. And if these vectors don't point in the same direction, that is, if they're linearly independent, in other words, if one is not a scalar multiple of the other, then they determine a plane, and that's the tangent plane. Right? Now let's introduce a word for that. Let's say that the parameterized surface is smooth at uv if ru and rv are linearly independent. That just means that you can't write one as a scalar multiple of the other. And in three dimensions, there's a convenient way to test that, which is you just take the cross product. So if you say ru is not, sorry, R, ru cross rv is not equal to zero, right? Um, in higher dimensions, you don't have the cross product. But you can still talk about vectors being linearly independent. Okay, so the parameterized surface is smooth if this cross product is not zero. In that case, then this cross product is perpendicular to both of these vectors. So this is a normal vector to the tangent plane. All right, and then if we write, um, say, R0, equals the point that, at which we're trying to find the tangent plane, 
then the equation for the tangent plane that we call the equation for any plane that's going through a point r0 with normal vector n is n dot r minus r0 equals 0. Okay, where r is the an arbitrary point in space, and this is the equation which tells you when that point in space is on the tangent plane. Okay, so let's let's do an example. So find the tangent plane to the surface say x equals u squared, y equals u minus v squared, and z equals v squared, where the range of parameters is u and v are greater than or equal to zero, and at which point? At the point 1, 0, 1. Okay, so I want to find the tangent plane to the surface at this point. I could try to sketch the surface, although in general sketching surfaces can be pretty challenging and we don't need to do that to solve this problem. We just need to work out the equations. So let's do it. So the first step is we need to figure out which values of u and v correspond to this point. So the point x, y, z equals 1, 0, 1 corresponds to uv equals what? Well, x is equal to 1, and here I have an equation saying x equals u squared. So that tells me that u is plus or minus 1. But then if you look at the domain here, we see that u is assumed to be non-negative, so actually u has to be 1. And likewise, what if v, well, z equals v squared, and z equals 1. So v equals plus or minus 1. But this, this inequality says that v is not negative, so v is also 1. Okay, so that's so now we know which u and v we want to work with. Then step 2 is we want to calculate the tangent vectors, r u and r v, at uv equals 1, 1. Okay, so r u, well in general, it's 2u, so, it's, so we have dx du, which is 2u, then we have dy du, which is 1, then we have dz du, which is 0, and now I plug in uv equals 1, 1 to get the vector 2, 1, 0. And what about rv? Well, dx dv is 0, dy dv is minus 2v, and dz dv is plus 2v. And when I plug in uv equals 1, 1, I get 0, comma, minus 2, comma, plus 2. Okay, so now we can calculate the normal vector, or a normal vector. So we take ru cross rv. So this is 2, 1, 0 cross 0 minus 2, 2. So the first component is 1 times 2 minus 0 times minus 2, which is 2. The next component um, is um, 0 times 0 minus 2 times 2, which is minus 4. And the next component is 2 times minus 2 minus 1 times 0, which is also minus 4. So that's our normal vector. Um, and then we can write down the plane. So the point on the plane, R0, is the point we started with, which is 1, 0, 1. And so the general point that we're writing an equation for is r equals x, y, z. And the equation is n dot r minus r0 equals 0. 
and I can expand it out as 2 minus 4 minus 4 dot x minus 1 comma y comma z minus 1 equals 0. And then if we multiply out this dot product, I have 2 times x minus 1 minus 4y minus 4 times z minus 1 equals 0. And simplifying that a little bit, I get that 2x minus 4y minus 4z equals what? So I have a minus 2 here, plus 4 here, and it goes over to the other side, it's minus 2. So that's the equation for the plane, tangent plane. To give one more example, let's look at the cone x squared plus y squared equals z squared. We've seen before that this can be parametrized as x equals u cosine v, y equals u sine v, and z equals u. So let's calculate the normal factor given by this parametrization. So our u, the vector of partial derivatives with respect to u, it's given by cosine v comma sine v comma 1. And our v, the partial derivative with respect to v, is given by minus u sine v u cosine v comma 0. When we take the cross product of these, our u cross our v, so the first component is sine v times 0 minus 1 times u cosine v, so that's minus u cosine v. The second component is 1 times minus u sine v minus cosine v times 0, so that's minus u sine v. And the third component is cosine v times u cosine v minus sine v times minus u sine v. So you see a cosine squared v plus sine squared v in there, and you just get u. So let's draw this on the picture. If u is positive, then the z component of this vector is positive, so it's an upward pointing vector. So it's going to have to look like this. And you can look at the x and y components of this formula to see that the x and y part of the vector is indeed pointing in towards the origin. If u is negative, that's where z is negative, then this component of the vector is negative, so it's going to look like this. Now, let's think about when this vector is 0. So, if u is not 0, then the z component of this vector is not 0, so the whole vector cannot be 0. So, ru cross rv is not 0. And then we get a well-defined tangent plane where this is a normal vector to the plane. But what happens when u is equal to 0? Well, if u is equal to 0, then all three components, uh, sorry, not this vector, but, well, so all three components of ru cross rv are equal to 0. And also, all three components of xy and z are equal to 0. So this is where xyz is the origin. then ru cross rv is equal to 0. And we won't get a well-defined tangent plane. And that makes sense if you look at the picture, um, because at the origin here, we have a singularity. The surface near the origin is not well approximated by any, t any plane, so we can't have a well-defined tangent plane here. I should note that in general, you could have a surface which, if you just look at the surface in space, it's smooth, but you could choose some bad parametrization where ru cross rv is equal to zero. But if it's a smooth surface in space, then you can choose some other parametrization where ru cross rv won't be zero at that point. However, when you have a singularity here, where the surface is not approximated by any plane, then ru cross rv is going to have to be zero for any parameterization of the surface.